So in your work, as I was saying in part one of this video about what's up, the forever life, you know, we only know sometimes drudgery, but in the afterlife, your work and your purpose will have no drudgery. It will be perfect what you do and create in heaven. And all five of these categories of your eternal extra life beyond this physical life, the forever life, the immortal man, the immortal person, the immortal being, the fountain of youth, I suppose, the all of it after, all those five aspects is the way, that's how we worship the Lord, as I understand it and have derived from Scripture. So your purpose here is important. And I equate that to people, like, figure out what your gifts are if you don't know. Many people are in the right areas, I believe. They're doing the work they were meant to do. But there's a third set of gifts in the Bible, in the ancient Scripture. It's called craftsmanship. So there's the technical things skills and gifts i suppose you have been equated to do some people are very good at reading you know fine details of legal documents and uh you know i have one brother that works in commercial insurance and there's tedious work not everybody has that administrative ability it's a gift of administration so you can manage and organize things right and there's that's my brother rod and there's other people that do things well. My brother Rich, I've told you, is an engineer. And uh, they know how to build and construct and find out and develop things. And that's just good qualities. Well, on and on and on. You know, so I'm not going to talk too much about details about people's lives about that. But what I want to encourage you is figure out, if you don't know, what your gifts are. Because let's say you had a gift of compassion and you never used it. It was just natural in you. Like, I'm a born leader. Some people are born leaders, right? And instead, you went into an analytical job or an administrative role, and you absolutely hated it, and you didn't have that gift mix. You barely got by. You struggled in it. Somehow people let you and kept you around. Well, you wouldn't want to do that. And if you did have a gift of compassion, and you held it back and didn't use it on people I just I mean obviously your belief is getting you where you're going um, as I've studied the scripture pros here but you want to make the best of your life today and enjoy it and do the things do the best things you can that and that dwell in you and you dwell in and make happen and uh, it makes the day go lighter it's not as heavy a day and I mean, that's constructed with all these things I've taught in the ways of doing things, the spiritual ways, time-tested, proven ways of getting things done, measurable results. You may even want to measure your own life. And as I talk about that, think about two things, believers and the king, his ways, okay? Think about those two things. I've mentioned your belief, believers, and I've mentioned the ways, because really the ways of customer sales and service, treating people well, all that are the king's ways. And if you accommodate that anywhere in the community you're serving, along with your belief, these five things in the afterlife are the only five things you really got to know and focus on in terms of what matters. So remember those five. I'll repeat them back to you at the end, but... Maybe measure your own life. Hey, that gives you assurance. Think about the ways I've taught and the ways you're doing it. And no matter what kind of life you had, go back over it and try to pick out from the bad if there was bad. And every man is a bad man. Just potentially some are less bad than others, right? People. <laughs> Perfect? No, none of us are. And uh, the lost sheep went his way. Oh, no, 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 no. This one stayed around with all the sheep. You know what I mean? So there's just some equations or analogies you draw out of the ancient scripture about it all. But measure your life. Talk about it with one another. Your mother, if you're just a young kid turning 12 or 13 or somewhere, and you're thinking about these things. Uh, when you're old enough to have your belief, it starts at 12. Otherwise, you're a child, I suppose. You're under the custody of your parents. And... Uh, you know, your eternal belief is on Jesus. He says that. 
Don't get in the way. Let the children come to me. And uh, so, you know, know how you've done and just talk about it. Share with each other and try to attribute success. Pull the nuggets, the gems out of your past because I'm sure there was some good things no matter who you are. I've seen it everywhere in public with people. No matter how well some people are doing and others aren't, there's, people have done well in moments to other people and with other people, you know. Did you feed the hungry? Did you give the thirsty a drink? All that stuff I talked about in the Matthew last day questions. So know that. Draw an equation of your life. What did you do with your gift or your skill that you had in eternal thinking? What's it going to look like when you stand before the Father in heaven on that judgment day? The Creator, our Creator, I suppose, and he asks you, what did you do with the gifts I give you? And I suppose you're going to give an answer like this. You know, you may have been a teacher. And, uh, you know, like my mom was a teacher, Karen May. And, uh, you know, I won't go into specific examples here, but I, I can talk about people's lives, but I just want to give you the analogy of it. So if you were somebody that... Uh, you went to college to be an engineer, a teacher, or a scientist... And then you got married and your husband said, well, if you agree with me, let's have a, a traditional family. You stay home until the kids are old enough and give them all that nurturing care that a mother can. And we won't put them in daycare, maybe. That's OK. Some people make that decision still. And you forfeited your college teaching degree or whatever it was. You only taught for a year or two. And then you started your family. Well, your, that man worked and brought home the pay and together you built a life as good as it was and everything else. Maybe you found other ways to use your teaching gift. You taught your boys. If you had daughters, you taught them. Um, maybe your teaching gift was used well. You started up a kindergarten business in your own home when there was no kindergarten in your little small community. And you're a private entrepreneur that way using your teaching gift. Maybe you substitute taught. Maybe even when you went to the bank or another firm and worked for a few years in the supplemental in years of income when you wanted to work both and there was needed income in the home. Maybe you had that teaching gift operating or a salesperson even as you're teaching your clients what they need to know, not just some kind of selling etiquette where you're uh, broadcasting forth information and trying to close the deal. You're actually teaching them the outcomes, showing them examples Maybe you're using it that way. All these ways are not wasted or lost. They will be found fortune in our Father. Fame, fame, fame and fortune, fame in heaven on that day. So I would say, you know, go with ease. Look at your life and try to live some of these later days in life that are hard with some ease of self. When you uh, flect back on yourself like a note to self, I'm encouraging people, don't beat yourself up. Find the gems and live with ease in amongst where there may be hardships and sorrow, where some people can't attribute that. We don't know how this whole economy is going. I'm encouraging as many people as I can and have that ease on yourself so that you can dwell amongst others where it's hard and know you're okay. And, you know, and it doesn't mean... There's not pride in it. It just it's given you peace of mind. You're the gem in the rose garden, so to speak, because it might get that way. Everybody might get a hold of this and start to see better than ever how good life really was in a lot of ways. Hey, and uh, I won't. That's about all I'm going to say. Um, you know, on the millennials, I guess, uh, and this is a a, a bad example because. I'm using a movie where there's a crime spree and it was about bank robbers, but the movie Baby Driver. And uh, they had a young kid driving their getaway car all the time. And he was young, didn't relate to them properly. They were older guys, stealing all this money. He had his headphones on. He was all listening to this music. And he wasn't really tracking or equating with them on the level they wanted him. But man, could that guy drive. And that shows you an example. And those skills could be used in anything nowadays. I mean, really. 
But that was the example of that movie. He could drive that car better than anybody on this planet, the way they showed it. And we have talented people in our society like that, and people do not always understand them. And so what I'm saying to you is give people a chance and a break sometimes and try to track with them in a new way that might not be the way I suppose you were trained in. Go and dig in, find out what maybe kind of motivates them, what their skill certain in their person is before any specific training, how they're inclined, motivated or driven, and then work with them that way. They may be a special gift in your business that you don't even know that's going to turn that thing around and bring it up out of the hole. If you can, as a manager or a business leader, get out of your comfort zone and be there with them and see how they shine and then make make it work. Even though it's, you know, not quite the way you did it and it's a bit out of your mold, but you're bringing them in and you're making it fit somehow. You're making it work and they're part of it. And that is the way. So I want to equate that to success uh you know i'm gonna close with one last point and this is all about choices always you got to know that and let's just say i was wrong about all this okay you ever thought that about life where everything you did what if it was all wrong and everybody else was right (laughs) i don't believe that for a minute but There's no force here that you have to do anything. It's just these are business consulting process results that have worked. I've doubled everything I've done in business and I'm doing it and aiming it at other companies right now and growing, continuing to flourish my business forward. And uh, But what if it was all wrong and people argue the Bible, hey, and you're living in your own dream world, maybe whatever. People in certain periods of time have believed we evolved from apes. It was the Darwin theory, Charles Darwin, Darwinianism. Well, what if you were that and that's what you believed? I'm just going to throw this out at you, okay, as a quote. How much faith would it take to believe that we evolved from apes? I mean, sure, they have hands, they can grab things, they sort of have some ability to think. You can see it in a lot in animals. But, uh, like, I, if I believe in supernatural things, and I do, I believe there's angels among us, why have churches grown, and other religions too, I'm not just talking about Christianity, there's a spiritual faith in all of them trying to worship some creator. Now, I've given you the one I believe is the right one, based on that ancient scripture prose of John 14, 6. But it says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And it's the only way. Jesus says he's the only door, and he is the gift of of forgiveness that nobody else has in any other world religion. You have to do all these works and equations to make something happen. There is no way where it's just a gift. He's the only way, the true way. And, uh, Why are there not Charles Darwin Neanderthal churches all over the planet, everywhere in every community, if that was truly a possibility? I'm just saying it. Supernaturally, how did all these churches get everywhere, especially all these Christian-believing ones, all these people wanting to worship a creator? How did that happen if it wasn't a real ethic and the Bible isn't really true, it isn't a real if it wasn't really a true document of ancient history and the things that have happened and the things I propose to you about good life, people who have done well, we can track those things and equate to to those successes and make them happen again in modern times. If it is an actual history document, which it is, which I say it is, and then we can see what people maybe didn't do so well and really screwed up and lost their life, and whole societies were wiped out, and one nation would war against another and wipe it out, all under God's hand, everybody under God, like Steven Seagal says in his movie Out for Justice. I'm going to go with that. Now you take care. You have a good day. This has been a good session. 
I wouldn't say it was what I planned, my session, when I woke up this morning. You know, but uh, it's like the screw tape letters of C.S. Lewis or the Witches in the Wardrobe and Mere Christianity. Those, If you want to read that third book, I never read any of them, but I appreciated the life of C.S. Lewis and I was taught by teachers some of his teachings. And he was a man that went out and he, what he wanted to do was take the his principles that he learned in ancient scripture, much like I have modeled my life after that same kind of ethic, and take them out into society hundreds of years ago, I'm guessing here, probably around 1400, in what was coming out of the dark ages of society where people were warring against each other, even Christians were warring against Christians in crusades. And I saw it even in my lifetime in Belfast and Ireland, the Protestants fighting the Catholics, bombing the subways, all that. I've seen it. He was a man, C.S. Lewis, that took this and said, I'm going to teach these principles, not inside a church where people can only hear the Bible. I'm going to go out and teach principles in society where people need to hear them, where sometimes people are in total darkness. They have no fruit off a tree to eat. Nothing. Nothing at all. And that is what that man did. And he set his life forward to do, and he did it, and it was a great thing. He gave people hope, he gave them light, he gave them something to eat, he gave them food to eat for their soul. And society's changed from that method, and he was a great man, raved about. And what I'd say to you is this, Justin Trudeau, whoever you are, anybody listening, would you rather have Canada and any nation being a tumbleweed blowing in the wind, ending up in some stranger's fence, in a dust bowl, or going beyond? Or would you rather have an oak tree and be an oak tree nation of any nation, anywhere in the world? Let's just talk about Canada for a second. Any nation, planting your roots down, becoming solid in things, and you're not really going anywhere. You're doing what you're supposed to every day, doing what you're supposed to, and up from that oak tree grows a great, huge plant, a tree where other people can come and get rest and be under and, you know, have a nice picnic, a romantic date with your girlfriend or whatever. And an acorn don't fall far from a tree. It's right there. But then more grow. And that's how society develops in a world. You know one person, one stranger perhaps, who you make a friend. And life can get better. So I say that and I go from there. You have a nice day. Let's dwell on that. Bernie May here in the marketplace. Business consultant firm, connectionsconsulting.com. Dot com. Call us in the marketplace, um, you know, 1403519-3495, about me, dot, uh, connectcons.ca is my other web page link, and we'll go from there. We'll make a business deal, I hope, not too far in the future. Have a good day. Go from there, and uh, have a good night, maybe. I only got... A couple more things to do today, and I'm going to be done my day here. And it's uh, I got to go for my walk because it's usually on Monday. Get my exercise in, run an errand to the store, and I got one more, actually two more things in work I got to do that uh, hopefully you'll see later on in the day. Take care now.